What's good, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Zether, and this is What If Naruto Went Back in Time. Enjoy. Hey, Ross, sauce it up. story off with a bit of a strange situation many people would probably expect this story to revolve around what if naruto went back in time and stayed in that time period but this is more like what if naruto went back in time and changed an event in history and that pretty much ends up altering everything that happens afterwards similar to a snowball effect that's what we're going to be going to do this is in more specifically saying what if Naruto changed the past? And honestly, I could have titled it that, but what if Naruto went back in time just sounded so much cooler. So we're going with this one. Anyways, though, the way that this is all going to work out, I'm pretty sure many of you guys can already guess it, is this version of Naruto is going to be once he is an adult. Now, why? Because why is it going to be when he's an adult? Well, the reason for that is because I'm basically going to be using the premise of the time turtle. If you guys at all watch Boruto or you even saw the Boruto filler when, uh, when Sasuke and Boruto went back in time and Naruto met Boruto and Jiraiya just had his awesome moment where he pretty much found out who Sasuke was, stuff like that. If you guys saw that, then like you probably already know where I'm going with this. So the way that everything's going to be playing out here is the way that Naruto goes back in time doesn't really matter too much to the story. Just know that Naruto would get a hold of the time turtle and would end up going back in time. Now, one event or another would end up causing for Naruto's time turtle not to take him to the exact location and time period that he was going for and ended up taking him back a little extra further than what he wanted to. Now, this in turn would end up actually causing Naruto to arrive at a time period in which the Nine Tails Fox was pretty much attacking the village. Now, on this day, Naruto had just been born and it is currently like nighttime in the Naruto world. At this point, Kurama is just rampaging around the village and Naruto would see as from afar, he could see Kurama just destroying the village, going absolutely haywire. Naruto would look at the village as it was just engulfed in flames and Kurama would simply be inside of Naruto's mindscape telling him that this was the day that Naruto was born and that he was sealed inside of him. Kurama would also look at Naruto, who at this point has like a little bit of a horrified expression on his face, but at the same time, he already understands what happened on this day, and he's kind of just prepared of what's going down. So, Naruto at this point would have ended up kind of, um, what's it called? Naruto at this point would kind of just be at the, like the right place in time, and he would essentially get in the way just before Kurama was about to quite literally pierce his nail right into Kushina and Minato. Now at this point, the nine-tailed fox saw Naruto when he was about to kill baby Naruto, but Minato and Kushina would have gotten in the way. This then would lead to Naruto standing right in the way and actually catching Kurama's whole like hand and claw with his one bare hand and then revealing like Kurama with his eyes like his eyes would turn red and Kurama from the future and the past would end up having an interaction in which Kurama from the past looks at Naruto and kind of just sees himself now when this interaction happens future Kurama would end up filling in like past Kurama of the fact that they're there from the future and to stop acting up that this will all make sense someday but to keep uh, but to protect that boy that he's going to be sealed inside because someday he's going to end up saving the world and saving him from the cycle of hatred. Kurama from the past would be like just like so confused and just hear those words and just like pretty much get knocked out. But as it happens, Naruto would immediately grab the Kurama from the outside world or from the past as he would end up sealing Kurama within a baby Naruto. Minato seeing this all go down is just questioning who he is. But the second that Minato sees those blue eyes and that blonde hair that Naruto has, Minato's not dumb. He would definitely be able to put two and two together as if you guys remember seeing the Naruto movie, Naruto ends up meeting Minato back in time and um, Minato pretty much ends up kind of 
like knowing that Naruto was his son and kind of the same thing would happen here where Minato kind of has this understanding that, you know, that's his son. So from here, what would end up happening is Naruto would smile at Minato's direction. Kushina and Minato would both look at him and Kushina's not dumb either, dude. She's a shinobi. She obviously knows who this is. A, a mother does not like does not see their son from the future and just not recognize it. <laughs> Bulma. <laughs> Let's just say uh, Kushina, she fi she finds out, you know what I mean, relatively quickly. And so what would end up happening is Naruto just gives both of them a huge smile. And internally, Naruto would be thinking, like, why did I do this? But one part of him would have pushed him to do what he had just done. See, under normal circumstances, Naruto would have let these events play out because he was not there for that reason. He is simply there to capture Urashiki and bring him back to the present timeline. Because Urashiki went back in time and he was gonna mess stuff up in the past. So basically, Naruto was there to kind of like save all that stuff from ending up happening. But instead, a part of Naruto just told him like that he always wanted to know what life would have been like had he been raised by his parents, had Minato still been alive, had Naruto had a mother, had Naruto's childhood changed. Naruto is this is something that he would have always wanted. And the infinite Tsukiyomi dream that Tsunade had would have always would have given us a small depiction of what would have happened. But I've never been able to look at that infinite Tsukiyomi dream and think of it as concrete evidence for what exactly could have happened. Because realistically speaking, I genuinely believe that there could have been more potential with that. There could have been more done with that. And it was just all from Tsunade's perspective. So instead, what if we have it to which Naruto saves himself? and gives himself the life that he would have always wanted. After this would have all happened, from the sky, a being, an Otsutsutsuki, would end up pretty much flying over them, as he would end up teleporting behind a baby Naruto. And when Minato and Naruto both see this, they immediately get into serious mode. Minato would use the flying Raijin mark to teleport baby Naruto back into his arms, and Naruto would rush at him instantly activating KCM2 to blitz right at his direction, at, to which at this point, he would create a bunch of mini Ross and shurikens and throw them at Urashiki. Urashiki would dodge out of the way, absorb a, 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 a bunch of them, and slowly begin to get stronger. Now Minato seeing all of this go down, he would be like, so he has absorption abilities, and at this point, Minato would give... Um, a baby Naruto to Kushina and Naruto would just look at his his father from the past and seeing as this Naruto was already fought, uh, fought with alongside his father in the great fourth shinobi war I'm going to be saying that Naruto has a genuine like general understanding of what his father can do so Naruto would pretty much uh, help his father by pumping Ninetales chakra into him and Minato at this point would have ended up having a, a Naruto uh, Kurama cloak of, around himself a one-toe Kurama cloak so after this, what I see end up ha ending up happening after this is Naruto would proceed to <clears throat> pretty much get into a fight with Urashiki with Minato's help. Now, the way that this fight would have ended up going down was it began with Naruto informing Minato that Taijutsu is pretty much the only thing that works against this guy. He can absorb all forms of ninjutsu and genjutsus don't generally work on Otsutsutsukis. Minato would be wondering like, okay, like, okay, I, I guess Taijutsu is a thing. And in, and in case some of you guys don't know, Minato is stupendously quick. He is fast and not only is he fast, but he is very, very talented when it comes to Taijutsu. So Naruto and Minato both pressing him with Minato using the flying Raijin to teleport himself and Naruto around. Uh, plus their already insane combat speed would completely outclass Urashiki in every way, shape and form. Seeing as Aboruto and Naruto from the past and Sasuke were able to defeat him, I definitely believe that Minato and Naruto would have had the same exact result. Now, they would both end up pretty much defeating Urashiki, with Naruto essentially having a sentimental moment with his father right after this. Pretty much telling him that in the future, he did it, and that he would proceed to become a great Hokage. He would end up telling Minato that even though he wasn't there, that you know he still loved him and Minato would have a smile on his face. Now those events never happened so he couldn't exactly relate to that but Kushina hearing these words come from her future son would smack him across the head and give Naruto the biggest hug saying that she is proud of the man that her son will become someday with her asking him if he ever got a family. 
Naruto would tell her about Hinata and Boruto, and Kushina would end up telling like Naruto that, well, so I guess she's going to be a grandmother someday. You know, they have a really cool interaction at this point, and Naruto would then end up pretty much having to go back to the present timeline. However, before doing that, Naruto would tell Minato to become a better Kage than any anybody before him ever was, and to train Naruto because this man will appear in the future someday. And if there is a ninjas capable of uh, countering ninjas as strong as that, then their world is pretty much doomed. He would also look at Minato and say that the man under the mask is not somebody to be messed with. And he pretty much ends up leaving. At this point, Minato just looks at a young baby Naruto. And from here, we're going to have an eight year time skip to when Naruto was about eight years old. Now, Naruto at this point would be running around in his house with Minato and Kushina, both just like Minato's being all relaxed, you know, he's reading the newspaper, you know, he's having himself a good time. His shadow clones are in the office doing paperwork, and Kushina is like, Minato, why aren't you scolding your son? You know what I mean? Minato's like, ah, man, you know, you know, Kushina, just, you know, he's my son, you know, he's my favorite son. And Kushina's just like, Minato, you know what I mean? You know, you know how Kushina is. So, you know, that's all going down, and Naruto's pretty much just, you know, he's just he's just having a mighty fine, he's just, he's just having a good time. At this point, however, both uh, Minato and Kushina would end up saying that, you know, it's training time. And Naruto would be like, ah, training time again. Keep in mind, guys, one thing that I'm going to be making very, very apparent is the Ninetales isn't actually going to be messing with Naruto's chakra flow. Because this Nine Tails was literally told by a future, a future Kurama, not to mess with that kid. Like trust him, and Kurama, like, 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 like if if we all know one thing, if we can trust one person, we can trust ourselves from the future. Because we're not gonna lead ourselves down the wrong path. You know what I mean? Like if my future self just came in, like from like the roof or something, like being like, do this, like trust me. Bro, I'm going to dedicate every second of my life to doing what that future self told me until I get the results that he pretty much ended up telling me. Because, bro, come on now. How are you going to doubt your future self? He's already lived through those events. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it'd be so trippy if that actually happened. Imagine like your future self tells you, hey, don't date that one girl. Trust me. It, it's it's for your own good. And like a couple years later down the line, you end up doing it still. And you're like, huh, so that's why he told me not to do it. Or you just don't do it and you always wonder what could have happened. <laughs> That'd be so crazy and trippy at the same time. Anyways, though, uh, tangent aside, I need to get back into this story. So during the past couple of eight years, Naruto, once he turned to the age of four, Minato would have pretty much put him into a routine of physical training, doing like basic calisthenics movements and also training Naruto on basic chakra control. So this Naruto is not going to be a slouch by any means. Not only that, but the Uchihas in this version of events were actually going to be having so much different things happen to them. During that eight year time skip, the Uchihas were not designated to a certain area in the village and like cast aside because of the suspicions that they were a part of the Ninetales attacks. Future Naruto came in and like helped with all that. So there's no way that any Uchiha member was part of it. So they never end up getting any part of that blame. Danza was actually taken out of power by Minato because of the fact that Danzo is just plain out corrupt. He is replaced by somebody else. Uh, do you guys know like the interrogator? The interrogator guy, the the guy who's who took place in the tuning exams. Uh what was his name? He, he had like he was like a he looked like a total badass and he had like a scar over his eye. I genuinely ha am having such a hard time remembering this man's name, but I'm pretty sure many of you guys like know who I'm talking about. He's ended up making uh the leader of like the Ambu and stuff like that. And no, actually, actually, Fugaku. Fugaku has made the leader of the Anbu Black Ops, like, like the ones that Donzo had control over. Donzo was pretty much like taken out of power. And now at this point, Donzo was like kind of scheming, trying to like do stuff to the Leaf Village because of the fact that he was taken out of power, basically. But uh, yeah. Anyways, though, like I said, Naruto at this point would have definitely been trained up by Minato. And a bunch of the events in the Naruto story would actually begin changing a whole lot. 
with Minato as Kage, a bunch of the mistakes that Hiruzen would have made in his time of becoming Hokage would pretty much be eliminated. Hiruzen would stay in retirement, and this version of Naruto would actually get to know Kakashi. He would get to know Hiruzen. He would not be hated by the village, and he would end up having a sort of very similar childhood to the one that Tsunade would, would have dreamt up for Naruto. Not only that, but this version of Naruto would have also ended up becoming friends with Sasuke at a super early young age. And Naruto and Sasuke would have pretty much ended up hitting it off as best friends before the academy even started. With Naruto being the son of the fourth Hokage, he ended up growing up being really popular with the girls. And, uh, you know, he just, you know, he's having a pretty good time. That being said, let's have another little flash forward to the time that he finally makes it to the academy. I believe he makes it into the academy at the age of nine because the academy is three years long, I believe, or four. Not 100% certain, but let's just say that he makes it to the academy. And in said academy, Naruto just breaks records on records on records on records. Naruto just starts obliterating a lot of Minato's records that he would have put because Naruto is not a slouch. Naruto is a prodigy. The original Naruto in the main story was able to master the Rasen Shuriken. He was able to master Sage Mode. And even though he was a knucklehead, a knuckleheaded ninja, Naruto was in every sense of the word, a prodigy among ninjas and shinobi like themselves. Naruto is, is, is just absolutely insane when you really stop to think about it. That said, this would like hugely impact the flow of the story for the Naruto world for years to come. And what ends up going down in the years of the Academy pretty much ends up becoming irrelevant material in which Naruto and Sasuke are both just at the top of their class competing to see who's stronger at each and every single little event. Naruto would have ended up sharing a really happy, positive, go lucky childhood in which he was viewed as a hero in the village for taking in the nine-tailed beast monster instead of revered and feared and hated in the village that he should have been known as a hero in. So this ends up changing the whole dynamic of the Naruto world. And when it comes to Kage summits and what ended up happening with the situation with uh, Hinata where she got kidnapped and Neji's father ended up getting killed for that, that doesn't end up happening. Now, the reason that that doesn't end up happening is because Minato isn't like Hiruzen. Regardless of the fact that there was that little situation, if you guys remember, Minato had an encounter with Killer B and the Raikage, and he was able to outspeed both of them. So, if even if the Hidden Cloud Village wanted to do something or wanted compensation for one of their ninjas being killed after attempting to kidnap one of the bloodlines that the you know Hidden Leaf Village has, Minato isn't the type of person to just sit by and be like, oh, bro, come inside, take whoever you want. Like, bro, my village is your village. Go ahead, go, go ahead. I insist. Minato is 100% not that type of guy. So events such as that, they never happen. I Trust me, that stuff is not going down with Minato on, on, on his watch. That being said, enough of Minato being the, the badass of the story, let's hop into more of Naruto's perspective. During his first couple of years in the academy, he would have been looked at by Ruka in a very positive light, and once it came down to the graduation years, Naruto would have ended up being pretty decent friends with Hinata, just because Minato and Kushina would have kind of like pushed Naruto in that direction a little bit. So Hinata and Naruto, are going to kind of have like a little bit of a friendship relationship early on where Hinata still does like Naruto, but she's a little less shy around him. And Naruto always just questions why she's so shy, you know what I mean? Like, but he never does figure that out because regardless of him being smarter in this version, Naruto is still our beloved knuckleheaded ninja. So when it all comes down to it, Naruto and Team 7 would end up being assigned to Team 7 and Kakashi would end up still being their Jonin sensei. Now, once that happens, introductions would go down, and let's say introductions change for the for a lot better. Since Itachi never massacred the clan, Itachi, no, sorry, not Itachi, but Sasuke would never ended up going into this emo persona where he was like, my name is Sasuke Uchiha. My goals are to avenge the Uchiha. Like that never ends up happening whatsoever. So instead, what ends up going down here is Sasuke would end up pretty much telling a pretty normal, like, hey, like, my name's Sasuke. 
I want to become powerful and defeat a certain somebody. Sasuke would also want to become Kage when he grows up. And Naruto would end up saying that he also wants to become Kage when he grows up someday. And, you know, him and Sasuke both grin at each other. Sakura, the trash bag, would just be in the background like, um, um, I can't believe I got into the team with the two hottest guys in the class. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, she's having, she's just, like, pretty much, like, creaming at this point. And, you know, they're, they're both just looking at her. And she's like, um, um, um. At this point, Kakashi would tell them both not to eat anything and to meet him at the training grounds. As Naruto and Sasuke both pretty much end up agreeing to meet there. And the next day would arrive where they end up taking place with the bell test. We pick our story right back off the morning of the bell test when Kakashi finally ends up arriving. Now the team would look at Kakashi and say, all right, so what are we doing today? As you know, Kakashi would just look at the team and say, see these bells? He would pretty much start like dangling them in front of the team as he would proceed to say, today we're going to be doing as Naruto would finish his sentence for him, the bell test. Kakashi would look at Naruto and say, precisely, Naruto, you want to explain the rules? Naruto would say, I mean, sure, but I'm pretty sure Sasuke already knows about it. He would say, yeah, I do, Naruto. As Sakura would say, oh, I mean, you can explain it to me, Naruto. From here, Naruto would look at Sakura and Sakura would say, oh, well, that sounds pretty easy after Naruto finishes explaining everything. And from here, Naruto would then look at Kakashi. As Kakashi at this moment proceeds to pretty much just sit there and take out the, the makeout tactics book in his hand. He would then begin reading it as he would say, three, two, one, begin. And immediately Naruto and Sasuke would both blitz at the clone. Now, keep in mind, at this point, many of you guys might be like, all right, Naruto and Sasuke blitzed at the clone. I don't know if I believe that. Listen to me. Naruto and Sasuke have quite literally been best friends since they were about the age of eight years old, right? Naruto and Sasuke are eight, year old, eight years old, and they've been with each other until the point where now they are currently 13 years old, I believe, in the story. So they pretty much had a solid five years to train together and get to know each other very well. Not to mention Naruto and Sasuke during these past five years have been trained by elite shinobi, such as Itachi, Sasuke's brother, Shisui, Minato, Fugaku, Kakashi himself, Hiruzen on some occasions. Like, if you stop to think about how, like, insane they have been training for the past five years, it's going to be making so much sense when you guys hear about the things that Naruto and Sasuke are going to be pulling off when fighting against Kakashi. So, both of them are extremely powerful. Sasuke is in a league of his own. He literally has access to two Tomoe Sharingan in one eye and one Tomoe in the other one. While Naruto himself has access to two tails of the nine tails chakra, not only that, but he's already adapted with creating Rasengans with one hand. Many of you guys might be like, hey, yo, but Naruto couldn't do that. You also have to keep in mind that Naruto at that age wasn't able to create a Rasengan because Kurama was always constantly mastering with his chakra. This Naruto, if anything, is pretty much helped by Kurama. And also to mention the fact that Naruto in this version is just a completely different animal. This is not the same Naruto that many of us know and love. This is a smarter, uh, more powerful, more confident, more knuckleheaded at the same time than the Naruto that we all pretty much ended up growing up with. So instead, what ends up happening is Naruto and Sasuke just rush at Kakashi and they end up forcing him to pretty much take his his uh, his Sharingan out. He would pretty much have to create some distance and reveal his Sharingan. So which at this point, the battle would then begin to get more even. Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi would pretty much just be battling for hours. And you guys might be like, hey, but Kakashi can't battle for hours. Keep in mind, this version actually had Minato stay alive. Minato was Kakashi's sensei at one point. And Naruto got stronger, Sasuke is getting stronger, the village is moving in a different direction. So Kakashi ended up having to actually keep up with the training and not slack off. Not to mention Kushina definitely made sure that Kakashi never ended up slacking off as much as he did. So a lot of things were pretty much prevented when it comes to Kakashi growing up and stuff like that. That being said, uh, Kakashi is going to be a whole lot stronger, and let's just say that he's about as strong as he was during the 4th Great Shinobi World War. And he has an increased stamina, and he already has access to his Mangekyo Sharingan. So Kakashi is definitely somebody that you do not want to mess with. 
That being said, the battle goes on for hours and hours on end, with Naruto and Sasuke continuing to press Kakashi, Kakashi creating a bunch of clones, and everybody going back with Taijutsu attacks. They would pretty much be playing mental games at this point, as Sasuke would throw kunais, fireballs, Kakashi would substitute, use clones, he would end up holding Sasuke, uh, he would take them out each individually, and then and, and then like go after the other one, like he would pick off Naruto, then pick off Sasuke, and kind of just go back and forth with attacking each of them individually. And both of them were getting pressed pretty heavily, and they pretty much ended up fighting until sundown. And that just comes to show how much incredible stamina this version of Team 7 has. That said, since they are literally fighting until sundown, Minato would have ended up wondering where his son was. So he pretty much would have ended up using his flying Raijin mark and teleported straight over towards Naruto. To which he ended up pretty much teleporting into the middle of Kakashi, Sasuke, and Naruto fighting. Minato at this point would have caught Sasuke and Kakashi's hand who were actually both about to hit him and pretty much threw them in opposite directions as Naruto came flying at him with a Rasengan point blank to his face but Minato pretty much flying Raijin um, to a different mark in the, in the village and got away from that and then pretty much like went right back to see his son Naruto like breathing heavily and sweating tons. At this point, Minato would look at Kakashi and say, so you definitely kept these boys busy. With Kakashi saying, I kept them busy. I'd use my Sharingan for hours and hours on end. Who knows how much stronger they got after that much fighting. With Minato saying, yeah, they usually don't even last even an hour against me. With Kakashi being like, maybe it's because you're the whole Kage. You know, I don't know, but something about being Kage might come with a little bit of strength. I don't know. I don't know. That's just what I think. But anyways, when Minato ends up arriving, he, you know, he has a smile on his face. He's happy that his son got so much stronger. And, you know, he's thinking about the Naruto from the future. And, you know, if he's doing a good job of making Naruto powerful enough to one day deal with, you know, threat on that level because Minato knows he's not going to be around forever so eventually Naruto's going to have to step up and you know kind of take over the village for him or Sasuke because Minato knows Sasuke actually wants to become Kage so you know he kind of took Sasuke under his wing as much as he took Naruto so they're both really powerful in their own right and you know they're all they're all doing good things but this is when Minato would point out that Sakura the whole day was pretty much just watching the battle. And Sakura would literally be passed out by the tree. And she would be woken up by Minato just like uh, snapping at her being like, hey, hey, Sakura, wake up. Sakura would be like, huh? What happened? And Minato would then begin to explain that the team is definitely strong enough. With Kakashi, Naruto, and Sasuke there, they could probably take on C-rank missions. But... The team is only as strong as their weakest link, so Sakura has some catching up to do. To which Minato would smile at her and, you know, Sakura would feel a little down until Minato would say, I mean, I could honestly just have Kushina train you up for a couple of weeks. With Team 7 being like, oh no, 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 like do not do that. And <laughs> Kushina would end up pretty much being asked to train Sakura up. So for the next, uh, like, weeks... Kushina would end up pretty much training Sakura for hours and hours on end and Sakura would end up being put through torture because training with Kushina is not easy to put it lightly training with Kushina is like hell times 10 so Sakura had a hard time but she definitely ended up getting a lot of gains from this training so yeah after this, they immediately pretty much go on to be assigned as Team 7, and the whole team in their entirety end up complain, completing about two C-rank missions, until eventually the day comes when they end up walking into Minato's office, and Tazuna comes in a drunken mess. Minato then proceeds to explain to the team that they have an escort mission, and that it should be simple just like the other two. From here, the team would think, I mean, a B-rank mission is in order, and Minato would say that they could probably go on a B-rank mission after defeat, after, you know, having this one go the right way. And so the team would look at each other and be like, okay, I mean, that sounds easy enough. So the team would pretty much end up kind of having like a little bit of a celebratory night, saying that this is going to be like probably one of their last C-rank missions, and they would go out to get some ramen, because Naruto still absolutely loves ramen. Not only that, but Minato and Teuchi know each other, so, you know, Minato definitely gets that Hokage discount, if you know what I'm saying, and, um, you know, they just have a good night in general. The next day would, of course, end up rolling around, and it's at this point that the team would end up meeting at the bridge. 
Oh no, not sorry, not at the bridge, but the village gates. When they end up all arriving at the village gates, uh, give me a second, boys. My bad, guys. I had to hold in uh, a burp. <laughs> Anyways, though, um, what's it called? Naruto and them would pretty much proceed to go on their journey, and let's say about 30 minutes in, they end up running into a puddle on one of the hottest days of the year. Now, when Kakashi sees this, he immediately just kind of like acts as if he got. Well, no, actually, no, I, I don't think Mina uh, Kakashi would do that. Sorry, because Kakashi this time doesn't have some students with him who are just completely oblivious to the world around them. This time, both all three of the of the people on his team are actually aware of what goes on. So instead, Kakashi simply just stands in front of the bridge builder as the two demon brothers pretty much rush at Tazuna, and Kakashi would hold both of his arms out, catching them and slamming them into the ground, saying that, you know, they're not going to be hurting him anytime soon. He takes out the, uh, the demon brothers, and after this, he ends up actually questioning Tazuna, how come some, uh, you know, some bounty hunters came after them? Tazuna starts sweating profusely and ends up pretty much spilling the beans, saying that he's sorry, that, you know, his little grandson would be so sad if his grandfather didn't return alive, and the team would pretty much end up getting guilt tripped, to be honest. Now, after Tazuna guilt tripping them, Kakashi would say, we were going to do the mission anyways. I mean, it's not like we can't handle anything like a B or an, or an A rank mission. As from here, Tazuna would, would have like a thank you face, and they would continue on with their mission until eventually they run into Zabuza. Now, honestly, guys, I would love, I would love to tell you guys that this battle is the same way that it goes in canon, so I can just skip through this and not have to take so much time with the Land of the Waves arc, but instead, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. This version of Kakashi has been training for far more years. This version of Kakashi, not only that, has far more stamina when it comes to Sharingan, and as soon as he noticed that there was a threat, a pretty high-level threat, he ended up pretty much deciding that, yeah, he was going to be taking this threat out pretty fast so kakashi would actually end up taking out his sharingan and immediately proceeding to mop the floor with zabuza once it appeared that zabuza was starting to get pretty much like immediately put onto the back foot tazuna started trying to create as much no not tazuna but zabuza would start to create as much distance as he could in order for haku to come in and then it became a two-on-one battle However, as soon as he got to that point, Naruto and Sasuke pretty much ended up jumping in and started literally jumping Haku. This is like no other jumping you guys have ever seen before. Sasuke immediately jumped into action, throwing a bunch of like kunais and shuriken in different directions with wires, literally trapping Haku in one spot. And Naruto would throw a kunai at Haku to which it would miss and Haku would be thinking that he missed. You know, he would say, you missed. But this is when Naruto would catch the kunai midair and say, did I behind him as like this insane like moment happens where Naruto pretty much like slams a Rasengan into Haku's back, just completely destroying Haku and then proceeding to just look at Sasuke as they both like smile at each other. Simultaneously, however, Kakashi would have quite literally impaled uh, Chidori straight into Zabuza's heart. And both of the enemies that they had to face would just be taken down so swiftly. Tazuna and Sakura watching behind, like just watching as everything just pretty much went down, would just be like, y'all are insane. And, you know, Team 7 would just proceed to tell Tazuna that, you know, the biggest threat should probably have been neutralized by now. So they end up making their way towards Tsunami's house where they end up meeting Inari. And this time what ends up going down is Naruto when Inari starts freaking out saying that, you know, they're better off just leaving. Naruto pretty much ends up telling Inari that if he doesn't be quiet right now, he's going to feel the wrath of Team 7. And when Tazuna hears that, he proceeds to say, uh, my apologies for my my grandson. He, he, just, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know what I mean? And Naruto would just start laughing, saying, dude, I'm totally kidding. As he would proceed to tell Inari not to worry and say that he's going to be saving his uh, his land or his uh, his village or whatever, saying that he promises or he or he isn't the son of Minato. And from here, Inari would have like a sort of smile on his face as Naruto would proceed to kite literally just, you know, just have a couple of normal days. Team 7 would end up pretty much training together and their main focus would be on Sakura, teaching her more about chakra control, finding out her nature affinity, which I'm just going to say is water. And pretty much just focusing a lot on her taijutsu abilities. 
they would proceed to essentially just have about two weeks worth of kind of just chilling, not really doing much in terms of being in the land of the waves, until eventually Gato and his men would arrive. Now, when Gato and his men would arrive, I'm guessing many of you guys probably thought that Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi were just going to single-handedly take them out, but instead, Team 7 would actually decide that it would be a really good training method if Sakura was actually the one that was tasked to take out all of Gato, all of Gato's men by the bridge. So that's exactly what they have happened. Kakashi, Naruto, and Sasuke pretty much say that they'll help if she needs, but if she's not able to at least take all of them out by herself yet, then she's kind of just going to be a lost cause. So Sakura feeling the pressure of knowing that her beloved Sasuke-kun is watching, she would proceed to take things very, very seriously. Snapping into her game mode and saying, Cha! I'm going to do this, you know what I mean? At this point, she'd be like, I'm going to beat you all, you know? And Naruto hearing that come from Sakura's mouth, he'd be like, huh, so she picked up on my mom's mannerisms. That's great. He would proceed to see as Sakura rushes in there and uses chakra enhanced punches to just start knocking people back and forth. She starts creating a bunch of shadow clones, not a bunch really, more like seven shadow clones as she runs in and they start using kunai to pretty much dis uh, dismantle many of Gato's men that were on the bridge. When Sakura finally finishes and she was about to get to Gato, that's the point when Naruto proceeded to grab Gato and teleport back to one of his flying Raijin markers in front of Inari. Now when Inari saw Gato, he flipped out and he was like, it's Gato! But Naruto then would appear behind Gato saying, hey, I told you I'd get him for you. And Naruto would then proceed to give him to the villagers to which they proceed to do stuff to him that it's 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 not a, it's they proceed to do not nice stuff to Gato to say the least not only that but a lot of Gato's money is then then taken uh by the village hidden in the waves or no not hidden in the waves but the land of the waves and then proceeded to take a little bit of a co extra commission by team seven for the two weeks that they were there and all that stuff so, Team 7 was reimbursed for this C-Rank mission quite handsomely. Not only that, but once they end up inevitably making their way back to Kanoha, they end up getting a pay raise by, you know, uh, not Hiruzen, but Minato, who ends up pretty much uh, establishing that that mission was more like a B-Rank mission for the fact that they had to fight against Zabuza, one of the seven legendary swordsmen of the mist. So, what ends up going down after this is Minato would look at Naruto as he would ask him if how he's feeling about the Chunin exams. With Naruto saying that this Chunin exams is going to be a breeze. His, uh, his only competition is standing right next to him. And Minato would look at Naruto saying that he hopes that's the case. But there's other ninjas in other villages and some very talented, capable shinobi in our village as well. So, Naruto, if I was you, I'd, you know, I'd be watching out. Naruto would just like kind of like... Uh, do the thing where he likes uh he like wipes his nose uh, not, not like wipe his nose but he like sticks out one finger under his nose and has like a cheeky smile or something i don't know dude but he just does like this like really og like naruto type thing and minato just proceeds to say all right anyways you're all just dismissed Minato would then tell Naruto to be home for dinner early today because yesterday Kushina got mad at him <laughs> and he would end up telling Naruto that he's gonna have to be a little bit more strict if Naruto doesn't you know start showing up Naruto would think about his mom getting angry and be like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make it today. So Naruto would end up making it to the dinner and they all have a really good night. For the following two weeks, Naruto at this point would start working more and more on his flying Raijin. Because as things stand, Naruto can only use about four flying Raijin teleportations in one day. Because the flying Raijin takes a whole lot of chakra out of him, even though Naruto has look plenty to go around it definitely does drain his body a little bit due to the fact that you know the flying raijin is a really high ranking ninja uh ninjutsu so i'm just going to be saying that that's pretty much what ends up happening that being said what ends up going down after this is team seven pretty much ends up kind of going through the village one day when they end up running into uh, garo's team now, they end up running into Gara's team, and the way that they do this is that, you know, they end up pretty much walking across um, across some of the some of the random shops in the Hidden Leaf Village, and Konkuro pretty much just, like, is being rude to one of the shopkeepers. So when Naruto sees this, he's wanting to say something, but Sasuke just puts his hand out in front of Naruto and says, let me handle this one. 
He would immediately proceed to say, hey, is this guy bothering you? To the shopkeeper, of course, and he would say, oh, yes, young man, like, he's trying to not to pay because he said he didn't enjoy it. And Sasuke would be like, oh, well, that's not very nice, now is it? As he would say, so, you think you're gonna pay or are you gonna have to speak to me about this matter? Konkuro at this point would say, stick a uh, butt out of here, dude, this doesn't concern you. And Sasuke would end up pretty much unveiling a Sharingan saying, but I think it does. To which he would see some strings attached to Konkuro's fingers and saying, a puppet master, huh? Konkuro at this moment would take out his, uh, his puppet and Naruto would blitz behind Konkuro as he holds a kunai to his neck and says, dare threaten my brother and I will, I got, like, I'll, I will gut you, my boy. And Konkuro was just like, noted. He proceeds to stop everything and this is when Tamari arrives like right next to Conqueror because Gar is just out in the forest being a weirdo talking about some blood blood I need blood you know what I mean like we all know how Gar was when we first met him anyways though after this little beautiful situation happens Naruto and Sasuke would proceed to train together just like they always do so Naruto would say don't you think it's kind of weird how we're training together even though we're gonna have to fight each other at the tuning exams Sasuke would just look at Naruto and say honestly I mean a little bit and Naruto would say, how about uh, how about we just train by ourselves for a couple of weeks? Just until we have to fight during the Chunin exams battle. And Sasuke would say, you're on Naruto. Whoever loses has to do whatever the other person says for a week. And Naruto would just look at Sasuke as he says, oh, you're on. And, you know, they both end up pretty much going their separate ways and training, preparing for the Chunin exams. Continuing the story right where I had left off, essentially what would end up going on after this is pretty much about, let's say, one week of literally nothing going on and simply Naruto and Sasuke training apart from each other would essentially be going down until the day would come where all of them pretty much have to end up meeting at the Chunin exams place where they're going to be taking the written portion of the test. Now, this goes as many of you guys are probably expecting. It really just plays down as Team 7 gets there. They're all immediately able to recognize the Genjutsu. They, of course, still do end up getting pressed by Team 10, I believe it is, the team that Guy leads, and Rock Lee would still end up pressing Sasuke and Naruto to fight this time. Why Naruto? Because he's the son of the Kage? Like, bro, if you were going to try to, like, declare yourself as powerful and you don't, like, you know, try to, like, try to go for the strongest guy there, which is clearly probably going to be the son of the Kage, you're probably not doing things right. So Lee does end up actually challenging Naruto and Naruto and Sasuke both would end up pretty much telling him that they should instead save their energy for the tuning exams. However, Lee ends up pretty much rushing in and saying, Hidden Lotus, you know, throwing a, throwing a huge kick at them. But Naruto and Sasuke both pretty much catch it. Like they grab one part of Lee's leg each like individually and they're like, we told you to wait. And they pretty much like kit like throw him back. Rock Lee would be just shocked at the fact that they were able to react to that, and Neji would as well. This would then lead to Team Seven saying, "Come on, let's go." And Sakura getting hit on by ne uh, not Neji, sorry, but Lee. After this point, they would end up going inside to the to the test portion, and we would then have the segment of the video where everybody pretty much uses these awesome tactics to copy off of each other's tests. Can we just talk about how dope this scene was? Sasuke using his Sharingan to mimic pencil movements, Gara creating an eye out of sand. I didn't know Gara could even do something like that. And Naruto using his famous technique of being like, nah, he not. I'll take the test by myself. Even though I'll end up writing down zero questions, I wanna do it myself. Hinata, don't worry about it. That beautiful technique would still actually not end up happening. <laughs> what ends up happening this time is Naruto is, you know, not exactly allowed to slack off when it comes to his education. So he is really smart and talented when it comes to these things. Not by choice, but because Kushina was simply not going to be having a dumb knuckle-headed son who knew how to do nothing but fight. So she pretty much put the books down and was like Chi-Chi when it comes to Naruto's studies. Minato would always tell Kushina to chill out a little bit, being like, hey, you know, may maybe give the kid a little bit of like rest way. But Kushina was not having it. She was like, nah, absolutely not. I'm going to make this kid be smart. He is not going to be turning out dumb. 
And, you know, from here, she would proceed to tell Nar to, you know, keep up with the studies. And so he would do so, meaning he doesn't actually end up needing any help from anybody else. And he would actually complete the test at about a similar time to his father. After everybody's done, all of them would be asked the final question and Naruto would end up being like, bro, that doesn't scare me. He would then proceed to move on to the next phase of the tuning exam, which would be covered by Anko, to which Anko would throw would throw the rules out to them and everybody would kind of be like seems pretty self-explanatory it's at this point that uncle would be like all right now go ahead and sign these these uh, pages don't even question what's on them clearly this is not signing your own life away and saying if you die we're not liable nope 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 it has nothing to do with that everybody would pretty much end up signing these papers being like oh like if we die you guys are not liable for it sounds reasonable they all sign their lives away pretty much and then proceed to rush into the tuning exams uh force of death now, I would love to sit here and tell you guys, Team 7 ends up pretty much having an easy time. They run into Orochimaru, then things get heated. Naruto and Sasuke almost get beaten. They end up running into Team uh, The Sound 4. Sakura has to jump in and save them. I'm sorry, guys, but that simply does not go down. Realistically speaking, even the Sakura that's on Team 7 could probably end up getting the scroll that the team needs. They pretty much end up going through the forest, and if any of you guys are wondering, so Orochimaru, is that a thing? Honestly guys, Orochimaru is not going to be a thing. Minato in this version of events is the Kage of the village. Not only that, but they have the entire fleet of the... Uchiha's were now not being pushed to the side. They're actually active members of the community, and there's a bunch of them that are in power, you know what I mean? So nowadays, the Uchiha clan doesn't feel as targeted. One thing that is definitely made clear to the Uchiha clan is not to be acting as if they're better than everybody else, you know what I mean? So the Uchiha get humbled a little bit, but they also get more rights. So it's kind of like a, like a, you get this, I, I receive, you receive this, I get this, you know what I mean? It's kind of a little trade-off, and the benefit is mostly in the Uchiha side of things, so, I mean, who's really going to deny this? So, yeah, like I said, Orochimaru is not going to be dumb by any means and try to attack the village for an Uchiha, the only one being Sasuke, since nowadays, Sasuke isn't even the only Uchiha, so if he really wanted to, he could steal some other random Uchiha's body and get the sharing on that way. But, there is a lot of supply, and the demand is like, one person so i doubt that anything's really going to be happening that being said the tuning exam section of the forest pretty much is boring and they don't even end up running into the sound four because an attack on the leaf village is simply not happening so instead what we end up having happen is the team ends up arriving at the tower like really really quickly actually beating minato's time because naruto not only is op himself and way stronger than minato was at his age but he also has sasuke to help him and sakura who was not a slouch this time around She's about the same strength that, say, like, she's like, she's like Sasuke's strength by the tuning exams. You know, she can hold her own. You know what I mean? She's not weak. Actually, not by the tuning exams, but she's like Sasuke's strength by the time of the, the bridge. Like, like, she's around that strength, which is pretty, pretty good. You know, it's pretty decent strength, but it's not, like, going to get her that far. But that being said she is you know definitely a lot stronger than Eno, so that fight's not going to be boring so what ends up going down after this is they pretty much all just wait in the tower for about three days naruto and sasuke end up doing some uh some mind training and they all end up having the preliminary battles naruto versus kiba is a one-sided stomp that i don't even think you guys want to get into but for those of you who do Here's pretty much how it goes. The way that I envision a fight with Naruto who has the flying Raijin and a Rasengan going down with Kiba is Kiba going down there flaunting that he's going to be the one to defeat the Kage's son, telling Minato that he's going to be taking his title next, and then immediately saying, Akamaru, let's go. But before he and Akamaru could even get into their fang over fang attack, Naruto would simply throw a kunai at Kiba, catch it, and then slam a Rasengan straight into Kiba's stomach, a small one at that. And Kiba would be sent flying and immediately knocked out with Akamaru right at his side. After this, Akamaru would start barking at Naruto, being like, arr, 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 you know what I mean? Kind of angry that he took down his, you know, his little owner or whatever. And then Naruto would go back up to the stands. As Sasuke would have his battle, it's pretty easy. Rock Lee would end up fighting against Gara. However, before Gara would have his limbs completely blown off by Gara, what would end up actually happening is Minato was fast enough, definitely fast enough to prevent this from happening, and saying that 
that, you know, one of their brightest shinobis was going to be killed and that he could just take the loss and it didn't have to even get that far. That being said, a couple of people in the stands would actually be like, you know, that's kind of messed up. People, you know, already signed their lives away. You know, death is allowed. But Minato would say no deathless, uh, no meanless death will be happening in the ring while he is watching. And, you know, honestly, that is really not a unreasonable request that Minato's making. So everybody would calm down and shortly after this, no real tension would really be going down. Everybody would pretty much be informed of the fact that there's going to be like a little one month time skip. And for this entire month, Naruto would have this entire time to pretty much try to get stronger than Sasuke, get the upper hand. Now, for this month, what would end up happening is basically half of the village is like so excited and everybody's coming to watch this battle because fugaku and minato's sons are the ones who are fighting like pretty much the two strongest people in the clan in the village are having both of their sons fight and everybody in the village loves naruto everybody in the village knows who sasuke is you know he's naruto's best friend and you know people actually really really like naruto in this time around they view him as a hero and him having the jinchuriki isn't something that the village looks at as like a demon instead they actually view it as Naruto's kind of the protector. And so when people see Gara in the village and he's in Shuriki, they don't actually treat him different because of that. They actually end up saying that, you know, he's actually not that bad. So Gara seeing this would be like, hey, yo, like the people here don't care that I'm a Jinchuriki. Like they're not trying to kill me. My dad is not actively trying to get rid of me. So that's kind of what goes down. Now, for the one month training, what would essentially go down is Naruto would be chilling training with Minato one of these days, Sasuke would be training with Fugaku, Sasuke, and Shisui, and Naruto would end up pretty much asking uh, Shisui what Sasuke has been working on. They would tell Naruto that he's been working on an insane jutsu that honestly would even give them a run for their money. And Naruto being like, alright, so clearly I'm gonna need to make a jutsu just as powerful as that. Now, what is Sasuke working on? He's literally working on the Kirin Jutsu. And some of you guys might be like, yo, Kirin, are you serious, bro? How are you going to give that to Sasuke early on? Let's be honest, guys. This version of Sasuke has had insane training since he was a kid by people way stronger than Orochimaru, who definitely understand lightning element and all that stuff. So they could teach him that stuff. Not only that, but this version of Sasuke is definitely comparable to the one that fought against Daedara. This version of Naruto is pretty much really, really OP and soon to be about the same strength level as the one who fought against Pain. So you put two and two together and tell me how that's looking. So anyways, during the one month period, Jiraiya would actually end up returning to the village and reporting to Minato that he's actually finding out quite a couple of things about the Akatsuki. Their movements are actually rapidly increasing, and he thinks that the Akatsuki might be acting very, very soon within the next couple of years. Minato would definitely be aware of this and say that they're going to be needing to stop the man in the mask very, very soon. After this, Naruto would walk into the office seeing Jiraiya and being like, Yo, old man, Purple Sage, how are you? And, you know, Jiraiya would say, I told you to stop calling me that, Naruto. But Naruto would just be like, Come on, it, it, it just, it just... It's just your nickname. Like, no hard feelings, right? Jiraiya would be like... <sighs> and from here, Naruto would be like, So, old man, you got any techniques you could teach me to maybe get the upper hand on Sasuke? Jiraiya, at this point, would say, Never thought I'd see the day where I would get to train you. He would look at Minato and say, You think it's about time that I teach him that technique? And Naruto would be like, Technique? What, what are you talking about? But Jiraiya would then be like, Just come with me. From here, Naruto would then be taught the summoning jutsu, and shortly after, he would literally be reverse summoned into Mount Miyaboku alongside Jiraiya, who this time currently wants to pretty much perfect Sage mode, and Naruto is here to learn it. Keep in mind, this version of Naruto, the normal version of Naruto, barely even understood chakra control when he was learning Sage mode, and not only that, but this the version of Naruto that learned Sage Mode had like a week, I believe it was, to learn it. So this Naruto who has two weeks, he understands more fundamentals. He's generally a lot smarter than that Naruto. Definitely has way of an easier time. Plus the fact that he already understands the clone secret. And, you know, he also has access to like a really large chunk of the QB chakra. Is able to master Sage Mode in two weeks flat. Just enough time before the tuning exam starts. Or the final battle. Now, the way that this ends up going down is Sasuke would end up pretty much fighting against Gara. No surprise, Sasuke ends up defeating Gara very, very easily. The battle pretty much goes similar 
kind of to how it goes in canon where Sasuke pretty much ends up throwing a bunch of attacks at Gara. Gara uses his sand to pretty much block it. Sasuke ends up becoming really fast and he ends up pretty much finding a weakness to the sand, which is pretty much attacking Gara from underneath. So he would use a headhunter jutsu to drag Gara onto the ground to which Gara would use the sand to pretty much get out of there. And in a moment of pretty much being shocked, Sasuke would shoot his lightning chakra through the entirety of the sand, which pretty much causes it to like, kind of like, uh, like uh, have like this th this like lightning effect before Sasuke weaves a couple of jutsus and says water devastation jutsu as a huge flood of water would just envelop the place and with the lightning and the water it would actually end up shocking Gara and from here Sasuke would pretty much be declared the winner after then after landing a bunch of solid solid blows now I do believe that Gara is powerful but do I think he's a physical tank not by any means Gar has never shown any like tank uh like durability feats that are too insane. So I think Sasuke should definitely be able to defeat him. And just saying, guys, Gar doesn't actually end up going crazy in this version because Minato's there, bro. Minato, 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 Minato. He's pretty much my my get out of jail free card for this what if. But it's such a good like thing. Like it, it just works, you know what I mean? That being said, Naruto would end up fighting against Neji. No surprise, Naruto one shots with a Rasengan. Then we finally get to the final battle of the Chunin exams. Now the way that this battle would pretty much go down is at first Naruto and Sasuke would be trading blows equally and the crowd would pretty much be eating it up. Naruto and Sasuke would begin picking up the pace and eventually they would both look at each other and say that it's about time that they would go all out before Naruto and Sasuke pretty much end up pulling out their strongest cards. During that whole time, Sasuke was pretty much charging up a kidding in the sky and Naruto at this moment was pretty much just uh, just kind of showing off a couple of moves. He threw in a couple of flying Raijins here and there, but Sasuke has a perfect three to Sharing gun in each eye that he was working on with Fugaku and Itachi. And Sasuke is actually able to read Naruto's movements like a book. That is, until Naruto was given just enough time for him to pretty much activate Sage Mode with his clone who's actually outside of the Chunin exams area, activating it for him. At this point, Naruto's speed using the QB's four-tailed cloak and also using the flying Raijin would be insane. Sasuke at this point would begin losing track of Naruto's movements and after this, Sasuke would barely be able to react to any of Naruto's blows with Sasuke wondering what kind of training Naruto did. The flying Raijin was already insanely hard to keep up with because it was instantaneous movement. However, the way that Sasuke would keep up with it all the times that he had fought him before was by keeping up with the kunais that Naruto would throw at his direction. That way he can know where Naruto's going to appear from or at least may appear from. So, Naruto would pretty much bait Sasuke by using a flying Raijin mark and acting like he was going to shove a Chidori into him. And when Sasuke reacted and threw a kunai at Naruto's face, Naruto would use a substitution jutsu with one of his clones that was behind him, as he would then immediately grab onto Sasuke and pour Sage Mode Chakra onto Sasuke's body. To which at this point, Sasuke would then begin to morph into like a toad-like state and Naruto would start losing it. He would start losing it in front of everybody. People would start laughing and Sasuke would then get smacked by Naruto to then break him out of that state. To which Sasuke would be like, I was utterly outclassed. Like, like Sasuke has obviously been beat by Naruto before, but he's never been quite beaten this way ever like naruto actually literally obliterated sasuke in front of everybody so sasuke kind of realizes hey yo maybe the show is called naruto but not sasuke so uh yeah sasuke kind of starts developing a little bit of an inferiority complex but it's not going to be as insane as it was in the original he would be a little heated at this but eventually he would kind of get over it and tell naruto that it was a good fight as Naruto would hold his hand out and Sasuke would then get up and would pretty much end up holding Naruto's hand up for Minato to come down and promote Naruto immediately to the rank of a Chunin uh, ninja. 
after this, what would end up going down is a couple of uh, years of pretty much peace and prosperity through the Hidden Leaf Village. Naruto and Team 7 would go on a bunch of missions. They would pretty much be the record holders for a bunch of missions completed in the shortest amount of time. Sasuke would begin growing more and more in power. But as things would go on, Naruto would start growing more and more and more. Eventually, his body would be able to activate KCM-1 by the end of the time skip. And Sasuke at this point pretty much fell way more behind than what he thought would ever have happened. So Sasuke at this point would end up starting to feel a little bit more jealous, seeking power, would end up pretty much telling Naruto he's going to be going on his own self-reflection and power-finding journey. Keep in mind, Sasuke is not evil. Sasuke's not going to go train with Orochimaru. He's simply going out to the world to find new techniques and to find things so that he can keep up with Naruto. He also was offered the chance to learn Toad Sage mode, but Sasuke said that that wasn't his style. Maybe something else would end up suiting him. Jiraiya would ended up would have ended up pretty much uh, being like, I mean, you might be able to go to the snake, uh, snake uh, sage mode. Like that's what Orochimaru learned, and so Sasuke would end up searching the uh, the place where he could learn that at. And so what would end up happening after this is Naruto just he gets pretty broken, honestly. Like like straight up speaking, like realistically. Naruto at this point is pretty much at the same power that he was by the end of the war. Plus, he has the abilities of flying rising. Plus, he's way smarter when it comes to combat. The only thing that he is really missing is experience. Actually, no, he's not really missing too much experience since he's gone on like hundreds and hundreds of missions during this time. Naruto would still have ended up creating a pretty cool bond with Jiraiya, but seeing as he didn't go on a full training mission with him, that bond isn't exactly as tight as it as it would be. And instead, the tight the bond that he would have even better would be Kakashi, where Kakashi would be sort of a big brother to Naruto because Kakashi is he's just that guy, you know what I mean? That being said. I'm finally going to be getting to the quote unquote juicy part, but not really. Honestly, it just goes downhill from here. If you were to click on the video, if you were to click off the video here, I, I honestly would not blame you. But essentially, I'm going to quite literally speed run through this what if faster than your dad left you. And if that hurts somebody's feelings, I'm so sorry. I should not have made that joke, but it was so funny. I'm sorry. My friend made that joke to me earlier and I, I just had to recycle it. I know I'm face rugging it, but i had to say it anyways though um basically what ends up going down after this is the akatsuki would start to make more foolish moves at this point they would end up pretty much attacking the hidden sand village to which naruto's team would be sent to ambush datara and sasori effectively saving the kaze kage of the hit lit village hidden in the sand they would actually end up saving gara before the shukaku could even start getting extracted more than 10 percent so gara would actually end up being safe and lady chiho would not actually have to sacrifice her life force in order to save Gara. After this, immediately after this, what would end up happening is Asuma would actually end up getting back up by Uchiha clan members and a couple Hyuga members, leading to Hidan and Kakazu actually be taken, being taken care of. And one more thing I forgot to mention, guys, Tsunade isn't part of the village. So Sakura ended up learning Genjutsu and she ended up more, more, um, uh, doing more training with Kurenai, learning more in that kind of field when it comes to things. So, yeah. And uh, Hidan and Kakazu pretty much end up being taken out pretty swiftly when they started getting more signs of struggling. The battle wasn't exactly an easy one. However, they ended up winning after taking Hidan out, who was separated by Shikamaru. And then Kakazu was pretty much sweeped by Kakashi. So, after that, Jiraiya would end up pretty much being like, I kind of want to go check out the leader of the Akatsuki. And Minato would end up being like, absolutely not. Like, we're not losing you to the Akatsuki and sending you on a one-man mission. Instead, what ends up happening is basically Minato would end up telling Jiraiya that he pretty much forbids him to end up going towards that direction. And he tells Naruto to keep a close eye on Jiraiya. Jiraiya would tell Naruto that he doesn't need to worry about him. And Jiraiya would end up pretty much going against orders and going to the village hidden in the rain. Now, when he would inevitably end up encountering his former student Nagato and a certain, what's the what's the paper lady's name? Conan, yes sir, sorry, Conan. He would end up pretty much encountering them and right when he pretty much started losing the battle, Minato would use his flying Raijin marker because he got suspicious of Jiraiya and knew he was up to no good. So he ends up teleporting in the middle of one of the clones and Minato just pretty much ends up throwing a Rasen Shuriken straight into the diva path. Like 
point blank rage pretty much eliminating the strongest one and Jiraiya at this point has gotten beat pretty severely but he can still fight you know he can still hold his own a little bit against the weaker pads Minato and Jiraiya would then proceed to decimate this and after this Obito would be like all right so this is just not going good this is not going as I was expecting. And so he would end up pretty much asking the allied, uh, the allied shinobi forces being like, hey guys, like us together, we could probably take out the hidden leaf village, but no other village was going for it because they all understood the insane power that the hidden leaf village wields. Dude, they are un just foolishly broken. That being said, Obito would then try to pretty much do an attack on the hidden leaf village, trying to pretty much like destroy it. But that doesn't go very well. It's pretty much uh, Nine Tailed. It's pretty much the Night of the Bit Tailed Beast attack part two, where Minato pretty much ends up like just shocking Obito with another new move that he ended up creating, which was the multi flying rising, uh, flying rising mark, which he pretty much is able to teleport to like four, like a bunch of different spots simultaneously and attack from all different angles. Not only that, but at this point, Kakashi already had his Mangekyo Sharingan up to date, and he was able to counter all of Obito's phasing abilities. So that wasn't exactly too fun for them. However, one moment that was insanely like crazy for them was the moment where they end up finding out that Obito was actually the one behind the Akatsuki. Now, when Minato ends up finding out, before he even lands the final blow, he would pretty much bring Obito in for a hug, telling him that he was so sorry for not making it in time to save him. Obito would end up telling him that he, you know, he was at fault for Rain's death. And, you know, Minato would pretty much apologize for that, saying that, you know, things don't have to end this way. He can join the village, but Obito would be like, I'm too far gone. You can't bring a man who's already de dead back to life. He would then proceed to look at Kakashi and say that that he's sorry for what he did before then proceeding to pretty much destroy the Rinnegan that uh, Madara's Rinnegan. So Madara's whole little plan would never come to fruition. And then Obito would pretty much try to like pretty much pr uh, commit uh, se se seppuku. Seppuku, I believe, is the word I'm looking for, which is pretty much <laughs> suicide. <laughs> suicide. <laughs> what? Um. Uh, I, I didn't say the word you guys are thinking. Anyways, though, he would unfortunately try to do this, but Minato and Kakashi would end up stopping him, telling him that he's a fool for even trying that, and that would conclude, what if Naruto went back in time? Y'all are probably like, hey, yo, what about the Akatsuki? Now, to answer that question, look, the original Naruto was able to handle them pretty well, and that Naruto ended up getting to those levels of power pretty late. Let's imagine a Naruto who at this point has knowledge of who the Atsutsutsuki are, a Minato who has already fought against the Atsutsuki, is present. Pretty much, uh, what's it called? Kaguya was prevented. And when it comes to the Toneri guy, he gets easy no diffed by, by Naruto, who just puts this man in his place completely. And yeah, that pretty much concludes what if Naruto went back in time. If you enjoyed the video for today, please make sure to go down below and slap that like button as well as comment hashtag giveaway because the giveaways winner will be selected within the next couple of days. I originally said that I was going to be doing it like a week prior, I believe, but then I ended up having some things come up and I wasn't even going to be able to ship it out. So I ended up prolonging it. So now you guys have more time. So uh, congratulations for that, I guess. But with that being said, though guys i love each and every single one of you guys it has been your boy zether thank you for watching and i am out peace